Welcome to Cruise Man's Garage, where today we're going to talk about a Honda CL360 that I restored back in 2008. A lot of you have asked about this motorcycle, so I thought I would put a video together. I did one similar for my Trail 70 that I restored years ago, so I thought I would do one on this bike as well. This is a 1975 CL360 that I purchased used in Dallas, Texas. Before we get started, I would like to remind you, if you enjoy videos like this, if you like this channel, please take a second to click that subscribe button, and don't forget to click that notification bell. Now, believe it or not, I actually rode this motorcycle home from the person I purchased it from. I purchased it off of eBay. I think I actually paid around $1,100 for it. I way overpaid. But... Old bikes are kind of in high demand, and they're kind of expensive. At a distance, the bike looks like it's in pretty good shape, but when you get up close, you can see there's rust on the frame. Here's one example. There's a lot of scratches in the frame, and my objective is to bring this bike back to as close to showroom ready as I can get it. You can see the chain is trashed. There's tons of rust on the center stand. Other parts of the frame have some pitting. The engine cases are scarred up and scratched up, and of course, those exhaust pipes are really badly pitted. The chrome is completely gone, so I knew I was going to have to either re-chrome these or source new ones if possible. And I also uh, did some looking at the horn. It was in pretty bad shape. It barely even worked. It was really, really not loud at all. And here's just another example of this is a frame bolt. I think this is the swing arm bolt. I'm not sure. You can also see the, the brake light spring is pretty rusted. Gas tank had some scratches and a little bit of rust. There was also a pretty good sized dent in one side of the tank, which is hard to see in the video. Uh, the handlebar risers, the bolts are rusted as well. You can even see a little pitting on the handlebars themselves, so I knew they would have to be re-chromed. The side cases were faded, the paint was faded, and the little emblems were completely trashed. They had to be repainted. The top of the gas tank revealed a lot of fading, so it's pretty obvious that this motorcycle spent a fair amount of time outside in the sun and probably in the Texas sun. The seat was actually in decent shape. There were no tears or rips, but the hardware was rusty. Uh, here you can see a little more of that fading on the gas tank. However, the gas cap, the chrome gas cap, held up pretty well. And even the lock mechanism still worked. Here's another couple of scratches on the left-hand side of the gas tank. Uh, the Honda emblem on the tank was also in pretty bad shape, pretty faded. Some of it's hard to capture in pictures. Now, the Tack and Speedo are really disappointing because they don't hold up in the sun very well. The red, red line portion of the tachometer tends to fade. Uh, for some reason, Honda motorcycles are worse about this than some other brands, but I knew that tachometer wasn't going to make it. Here you can see some pitting on the front forks. Uh, there's also some rust on the front brake linkage. Of course, this has drum brakes front and rear. Now, one of the chrome exhausts was in fair shape, but the little mounting collars were both rusted out, and of course that right side exhaust was completely trashed. The entire exhaust system really became one of the hardest things to restore on this motorcycle. Both of the mufflers were really rusted and pitted. The guards were also, the chrome guards were very scratched up. The bike had obviously been dropped several times. Uh, the front forks were leaking, so I knew the seals would have to be replaced, and those little uh, boots would have to be replaced as well. So a fork rebuild was going to be part of the process. You can see the little chrome tail light mount was pretty rusted and pitted. I knew that would have to be replaced. And at this point, I didn't know how much of this these parts I was going to be able to source on eBay or from Old Bike Barn or someone else. So the first order of business was just to disassemble the entire bike, take it down to the studs, and see what we're really dealing with. 
Here you can see the gas tank is off of the bike. Uh, most of it's just dirty. There's no rust under here. Uh, the wiring harness was actually in decent condition. Um, here you can see the rear fender, a lot of rust. The toolbox is a lot of rust. Uh, it just, you know, the more you dig into it, uh, you see problems. Every part was removed. I wrote down every part and I put everything in Ziploc bags so I could keep everything organized. So these are the notes I took during disassembly. I took a photograph, at least one, many of most parts, because I wanted to remember how to put everything back together. There's the underside of those muffler guards, the heat shields, pretty bad shape. Not sure if they can be salvaged. On the other side of the engine, you can see the other side of the frame. One of the coil packs is over there, and the horn. And, the, and once I pulled the engine out of the bike, got a good close look. Look, it was really mostly just grime and dirt, uh, things that could be cleaned up. There were some scratches on the engine, engine cases, but it wasn't in terrible condition. Uh, however, I did make the decision to send the engine off and have the valves redone and uh, have some cleanup done internally. Now, this is kind of the roller, you might say, before I remove the wheels and the suspension. Um, and this is the last I saw of the bike while it's still together. Of course, I had to remove the rivets that hold the VIN number in place uh, so that I could reinstall that later. My goal from day one was to take the frame and have it completely sandblasted or media blasted and then uh, powder coated black uh, to, to you know give it a really good finish. Here's the swing arm. I tried to grind off some of the rust before I took it to the powder coater. These two rear shock bearings had to be removed. They're pressed in. And I didn't own a hydraulic press, so I ended up taking this to a machine shop and having them press those out for me. They didn't even charge me. And here you can see another look at the frame, some of the rust and issues that had to be dealt with on the frame uh, for sandblasting and powder coating. Now, this is about three months into the project. I finally got the frame back. It completely sandblasted and powder coating. It really looked beautiful. They did a great job. Here you can see the swing arm after it's been powder coated. Have not even pressed in the new bearings yet, uh, but it everything just came out really slick. I had a gloss black powder coat put on all of the frame, the battery box, the toolbox, the center stand. Uh, some of the bracketry. Now the exhaust is one of the things I spent the most time on. As you can see, on this particular muffler, it is attached to the exhaust pipe with a, with a ring that's pressed on at the factory. You can't just unbolt it and remove the muffler. So to re-chrome the exhaust pipes, I had to somehow remove that muffler. Now, this is what the engine looked like before I sent it off to my friend. I think he's in North Carolina. He re rebuilt my Trail 70 engine, and he agreed to cut the valves on this, redo the valves, clean up the pistons and the cylinders. Even though he doesn't work on these Honda Twins, he agreed to do it for me. Here I've removed the valve cover, which is going to stay with me. I'm going to restore that. Uh, the heads, however, are going off to the uh, rebuilder. He's going to work on the cylinder heads, and he's going to also work on the uh, pistons. So here you can see there's a little bit of carbon deposit, worse on one side than the other. And then here was the condition of the pistons and the rings themselves with the heads removed. Now I taped all of this up to protect the internal mechanisms of the engine because I was going to completely repaint these engine cases. Here you can see the clutch pack. I did not replace the clutch plates. They seem to be working well. And there's also this very interesting little centrifugal oil filter down there on the right. It's very interesting the way it works on an old CL360. Here I've repainted the engine cases. I tried to polish them, but the metal was in such bad condition it really couldn't be polished, so I decided to go with like an aluminum high temperature paint. I also replaced the hardware with non-OEM style hardware because 
I had a heck of a time getting those uh, Phillips or JIS screws out to get these case covers off. Here you can start to see the engine coming back together. Uh, the heads have been rebuilt. He even uh, shot blasted the heads to clean up those fins. It looked really good. It looked like a brand new engine. Uh, I used that high temperature aluminum paint on the uh, valve cover as well. And once I replaced the valve cover and torqued everything down to spec, the engine is just about ready to go back into the bike. I was very happy with the way the engine turned out. It's kind of the jewel of the motorcycle. I think this is the points cover that I took off and I just repainted it with a heat proof flat black or semi flat black, black paint. Now I actually restored the front forks. Here you can see on the bottom is one that I've restored. I basically sanded it down and then used a, sc a Scotch Brite to kind of give it a grain. The one on top is has not been restored yet. I was unable to locate NOS side emblems, and these were in bad shape, so I tried to clean all the old paint off and basically bought tester's paint and repainted these by hand, and it was very tedious. I think I spent three days on this alone. At first, I was going to try to repair this gas tank and um, do some body work on it, maybe sand out the scratches and use a little filler. You can see here I put a primer coat on. And there's a little bit of rust inside the tank, but it wasn't too bad. So I was really hoping I was going to be able to salvage it, take it to a painter, and have it repainted uh, the factory color. But I was able to locate an NOS tank on eBay. Unfortunately, it was in the other color they made that year, which was a green. So I still was going to have to have the tank repainted. I removed the spokes and the rims from the wheels, and here you can see I've repainted those wheels using that high-temperature aluminum paint, and I did learn how to lace up a wheel. I did this in my living room uh, with some help from YouTube and, and the Internet, and I bought all brand-new stainless steel chrome-plated spokes and relaced the wheel. Now, I did take it to a Honda dealer to have them balance it once I got it all together. And then they've mounted the tires here, and it looks brand new. Brand new tires, and the rims were completely re-chromed. I completely disassembled and rebuilt the carburetors using a carb rebuild kit that you can still buy online, and I had those carburetor caps re-chromed. My initial plan was to disassemble the rear shocks and send the springs and other parts off for re-chroming, but it was going to be really expensive and it was time consuming and I was able to locate, believe it or not, a set of NOS shocks for this bike and I ordered them and I went ahead and replaced them with brand new. I purchased at least three different starter motors on eBay for this bike and repainted them that aluminum color to match the rest of the engine. Here you can see I'm restoring those rear mufflers. I This is a primer coat, and then I ended up uh, spray painting them with a heat-resistant uh, flat black engine enamel from Duplicolor. Here's one of the pieces that came back from the chrome shop. It's the brake pedal. I had it completely stripped down and re-chromed. Uh, re-chroming was one of the most expensive parts of the project. And of course, I installed a brand new chain and both sprockets. By November of 2008, I was ready to begin reassembly. Here I'm hooking up some of the wires inside the headlight bucket. Uh, I got an entirely new wiring harness for this motorcycle so that everything would be fresh and clean. Here you can see I've got the uh, roller put together with the rear wheels, the shocks, and once again, I'm working on that, uh, on that wiring, which was tedious, but it really wasn't as hard as you might think. I can't begin to tell you how much blue Loctite I went through while reassembling this motorcycle. Uh, lots of Loctite was used to keep everything secure. Here I think I'm reattaching the rear or the mufflers on the left side. I was able to source a brand new set of exhaust pipes with mufflers. I couldn't believe I found it. I found a lot of NOS parts, which I couldn't have done this project without.
Here you can see I've got the engine back in the motorcycle, the new exhaust pipes with new mufflers. It's starting to look like a motorcycle again. I can't tell you how excited I was to find the this brand new NOS exhaust system because I spent a fortune having the old exhausts cleaned, dipped, and re-chromed, and I don't know how I would have ever gotten them back together properly. I was even able to source a brand new NOS Honda seat. So I replaced the seat with a brand new seat, and uh, here you can see a brand new petcock I installed on the gas tank with the Teflon tape. It's very easy to go down a rabbit hole on these motorcycles. You just start buying new parts like turn signals and horns, and it, it really starts to add up. I even was able to find a brand new Speedo and Tack. Very expensive, but well worth it. It really made the bike look new. So let's take a look at the finished 1975 Honda CL360. The paint job came out amazing. I had the side covers and the gas tank painted per Honda specs by a local painter. And it even, it looks better than factory because he, you know, cut and buffed it. So there was no orange peel. I mean, it was literally perfect. It's just beautiful, but done in the factory color. All the chrome was redone, brand new wheels and tires, new brakes, um, just engine rebuilt pretty much from the ground up. And I think the bike just turned out incredible. I don't even know how many hours I had in working on this bike and restoring it. I know I had over $7,500 in the bike by the time it was all said and done. And I rode the bike several times. Uh, it ran great, by the way. Just look how good those hand-painted emblems turned out that I restored. I think they really came out looking good. Here you can see inside that brand new NOS gas tank that even though it had to be repainted, I mean, it was in excellent condition when it arrived. These projects are really a labor of love. You just don't ever get your money out of them because the bikes, when they're finished, are not worth the money you put into them. Uh, nobody would probably spend this kind of money and time to restore a bike that was only moderately popular. But just look at how much better that speedometer and tack look to what I had when I originally got the motorcycle. And here I was able to get some side-by-side -side shots of my CL360 right next to my Trail 70, which I had restored a year earlier. I'm just so happy with the way the engine turned out, that brand new chrome exhaust. Now the exhaust um, heat shields were re-chromed. This is what it looked like before the restoration. You can see how pitted that was. I think this motorcycle looks about as good as you could do on a project like this with what's available today. All of those front brake components were re-chromed or repainted. I mean, it just really, there's a lot of attention to detail here. I was able to have the handlebars re-chromed, uh, but I did put new hand grips, and I was able to find brand new NOS hand controls. And believe it or not, I was able to source an original CL360 owner's manual on eBay. And then underneath the seat, you can see the seat pans brand new because it was a new NOS seat. And everything looks pretty good under here, I think. I kept the bike in my garage for a few years, but I was always afraid to ride it for fear I'd drop the bike and break something that couldn't be replaced. So I finally decided to sell the bike. I received an offer from an older gentleman in Florida who was putting in a motorcycle-themed cafe, and he wanted to display the bike in that restaurant as a vintage Honda motorcycle. So I agreed to sell him the motorcycle. A few months after I sold the bike, I contacted him and asked him how the motorcycle was doing. He sent me a photograph of it. It was in the foyer of his home. He had it on display in his house in Florida. Unfortunately, this story does not have a happy ending. He ended up storing the bike in a storage unit with a couple of motorhomes and a bunch of other vintage motorcycles that he had collected. And one of those motorhomes 
caught fire. Everything in that storage unit was destroyed, including my wonderful, beautiful, restored Honda CL360. So sadly, the motorcycle is no more. I wish this story had a happier ending, but it just doesn't. Hey, if you liked this video, please take a second to click that like button. It really does help out my YouTube channel. And thanks for letting me tell this story.